Hi, I'm Chip Childers, Vice President of Product Strategy at Cumulogic. Today, I'm going to be giving you a demo of the Cumulogic Service Broker for Cloud Foundry, which we've recently released as a technical preview. If you'd like to see an overview of how the Cloud Foundry and Cumulogic platforms relate to each other, please be sure to watch the other screencasts we recently posted. Architecturally, there are four elements to this demo. First, we have a Cumulogic Database as a Service platform instance running. You can see the user interface here, and this is where we'll be able to both observe the provisioning process and use Cumulogic's advanced operational features to maintain the database once it's deployed. Next, the service broker application will need to be configured to point to the Cumulogic instance. We've shared this code on GitHub, and for the demo, I've cloned the repository into a local folder. Instructions for how to configure the Cumulogic YAML file can be found in our documentation for the service broker. The service broker code is a Sinatra-based Ruby application that's designed to create an API bridge between Cloud Foundry and Cumulogic. The application exposes the Cloud Foundry service broker version 2 API and translates these calls into the appropriate API functions needed to work with the Cumulogic controller. The third component is Cloud Foundry itself. I have Cloud Foundry running as a single virtual box virtual machine using the Bosch Lite project that the Cloud Foundry community has made available. I can confirm that the Cloud Foundry services are all running by running Bosch CCK. No problems have been found, so we have a functional Cloud Foundry environment. The last component needed for our demo is a very simple Hello World application I'll use to demonstrate how the app can take advantage of the services provided by Cumulogic. So let's get started. In order to start the service broker, we'll run a bundle install. Next, we'll run RackUp. This is going to start the software itself, which you can see is now listening on port 9292. We're able to run a curl command against our local instance of the service broker in order to determine whether or not connectivity is established correctly with the target cloud uh, Cumulogic platform. A couple of things to note. First, you can see that we're doing a basic authentication using an admin, admin, user, and password combination. Obviously, this can be configured for your specific installation, uh, but it's important because Cloud Foundry requires that any service broker API enforce basic authentication uh, using a username and password that will be known to the cloud controller on the Cloud Foundry side. Now let's set up our new service broker within Cloud Foundry. I've previously configured my CF command line tool to point to the Bosch Lite Cloud Foundry deployment, and I've set myself up as the admin user. You can review how to do this in the Cloud Foundry documentation. Our first step is to run the add service broker command. This command is going to allow us to name the new service broker, as well as provide it with the appropriate URL and login credentials. One thing you'll notice is that that URL I'm using includes the 192.168.100.100 IP address as opposed to localhost. This is an artifact of the fact that I've deployed Cloud Foundry in a virtual machine running on the local laptop. Um, needless to say, that 192.168.100.100 address is actually pointing to my local host. Okay, so now the service broker has been configured within Cloud Foundry. Next, we're required to actually make the services exposed by that service broker public so that the app developers can view and instantiate them. Doing this is a bit tricky, so I recommend that you take the time to read through the Cloud Foundry docs on how to make a plan public. But let's walk through the process here. First, we need to execute a CF curl call to get a list of the known service plans from the cloud controller. This is going to allow the cloud controller to execute a local host request, and it's going to return a JSON doc that includes both the service plans that are exposed by Cumulogic. What we have here is two sections of the document for each one of the resources. The first is metadata, the second is the entity. We'll be grabbing the GUID out of the metadata 
property collection. And we're going to make use of that in just a minute as we do another CF curl call. This time it's going to be a put. And we're going to send a particular property change that's going to set that plan to public. That works successfully. And now I'll execute that same call for the second plan, just replacing the GUID. Now both of our plans should be public. Let's change from acting like an administrator and walk through the development experience. As I explained earlier, we have a very simple Sinatra application to use for the demo. Let's look at the important code. Hello world.rb is a very straightforward Sinatra application with two specific routes in it. One of them is the index route, and the second is a slash env route. The index route is going to pull some data out of what's called the VCAP services environment variable. This is what gets populated once an application is bound to a Cloud Foundry backend service. This, it will then insert some data into the MongoDB database, and it will read back um, and return all of the items that are in that collection. Very straightforward. The environment route is actually going to just dump out the values that are stored in the VCAP services environment variable. We'll use this for debugging to show what happens uh, once we bind the application. So our first step as a developer is going to be to request a new service. This is done through the CF create service call. It's going to allow us to name the new service. Once we select the Cumulogic NoSQL, uh, we'll select the name uh, that's been offered. And then we'll select the small database option. So that call has been passed over to Cumulogic. What we can now see over in the Cumulogic dashboard is that the service is being provisioned. One of the reasons that we're currently releasing this as a technical preview is that we're waiting for some changes to the Cloud Foundry community uh, that the Cloud Foundry community is making to allow for asynchronous provisioning of services. For now, we need to wait for the service to complete provisioning before proceeding. Okay, we can now see that the new MongoDB environment has been provisioned by the Cumulogic controller. Let's switch back to our command line and proceed with the process of binding the application to the newly deployed service. First, we'll execute a CF push to load the application into Cloud Foundry. This is going to take my application code, push it into the Cloud Foundry staging environment, and from staging it will be um, sent to one of the droplet execution engines for run. Next, we're going to bind a service, the service that we just created, to that application. We'll select our Hello World application. We'll select the deployed MongoDB service. We then need to issue a restart for the application so that the VCAP services environment variable gets, pick, picks up that new binding that we've done. Let's see what the application's environment has in it right now. And we'll use that ENV URL. What you can see now is that the application itself has been deployed within Cloud Foundry, and the act of binding it has provided the application itself with all of the necessary credentials it needs to access the MongoDB database, including the URL, the username, password, and other important information. Let's look at what's returned when we hit that root URL. 
In this case, our code has been executed that's inserted uh, a single document into the collection itself, and it's been returned to us. If we run it again, we've inserted the exact same document a second time, and then returned the entire collection. So at this point, we now have an application deployed by Cloud Foundry that's using a Cumulogic provided MongoDB database. And we know that that database is going to be backed up. We know that there's monitoring data to support both availability, performance, and also capacity planning um, metrics that we need to operate that over the, its life cycle. So at this point, let's go ahead and undo what we've done so far. First, we're going to unbind the service from the application. We'll detach it from Hello World, and that's the service we'll detach. Next, we'll actually ask Cumulogic to delete that MongoDB service that it instantiated for us. At this point, the Cumulogic controller is terminating all of the elements of the service and freeing up the underlying infrastructure capacity for use for some other purpose. Well, that's it. Thanks again for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Cumulogic platform and this technical preview, please do get in touch. We can, you can find us at www.cumulogic.com or free, feel free to email info at cumulogic.com to get in direct contact.